It doesn't matter what your job is, if you are doing it from home and you have kids in tow, wow, it's a whole thing. And if anybody watching has a cure for that feeling of completely failing at both parenting and working, then let me know in the comments because I would love to hear that. Seriously though, the juggling act is real and here in the UK at the moment, at the time of filming, it's August and we are slap bang in the middle of the summer holiday. So I am trying to work my two jobs, which is running my online Etsy shop and this channel alongside parenting my daughter. And currently at the time of filming, flying solo as uh, Dan, my husband, is off with his own work for a week. So, <laughs> fun. But despite the chaos and feeling frazzled and tired and being pulled in 50 different directions at the same time, somehow I'm still managing to get things done and not quite lose my mind. So I thought this would be a great time to stick five tips together that I can give you that work for me. They may not work for you, but if nothing else, hopefully this video will let you know that you're not alone. So we're going to dive straight in with tip one, which is to plan for the least productive version of yourself. And that looks like basically only putting one to three things on a to-do list. And when I say one to two things, I mean one, if it's a big thing, or maybe three, up to three smaller things. And you might think, Kim, bless your heart. I have so many more things to do. Yeah, I know. I know. Trust me. But Work-wise, you want to focus on the most important thing, the thing that keeps that needle moving forward, the thing that keeps the money rolling in. You have to focus on the one thing. There are things that can get pushed down the list. Focus on the most important thing because you might have a more productive day than you realise. You might end up with more energy. Your kid might not ask you for snacks every 20 seconds. Miracles happen. If you put the bare minimum on the list, the most important things on the list, and you focus on those, then anything extra that you get done on top is a bonus and will hopefully mean that you will end the day not feeling like you completely sucked at your job. Tip number two. This sounds so simple, but it's been quite a game changer for me. And that is identifying the part of the day that I am the most productive. And also, if you want to drill down even further, identify the parts of the day that you do certain items the best. So for me here filming, I do this best in the morning before lunchtime. Every single time I try and sit down and film a video in the afternoon, I don't know what happens. It's like my, my brain is soup and it just, it doesn't always work. Put it this way. The videos that I make in the morning need less in terms of editing. And then the ones I make in the afternoon, it becomes a whole thing. So yeah, that would be my advice to you. Have a sit and think or a stand and think, you know, if you're multitasking, but just have a think about what times of the day that you feel the most energized and that you, you tend to get like a an hour where you get most done and just aim to try and do your work then. Tip three, and I've learned this one through bitter experience. If there are people around you, communicate with them what your plans are or what you would like to get done because this is gonna be a bit shocking it was shocking for me. People can't read your mind. I know, I know. For example, before I sat down and made this video, it's just my daughter in the house, so I had to explain to her that I was about to sit down and make a video so if she could not play with the dog and get him to bark and play Netflix at full volume and that sort of thing. If she could basically just try not to kill herself for the next 10 minutes or so, that would be great. Tip number four, remember to be flexible with your plans and with your time. Life is gonna life, things are gonna happen. For example, my kid is of school age now, so she's a lot more independent than she was, but she does still need regular connecting and, and just time hanging out with us. So you do need to factor that in. When she was younger, she was much more hands-on. So the, I would not be able to do this while it was just me and her in the house. In years gone by, I would have had to have waited for my husband to help out with that, to keep her entertained so that I could have done it. Flexibility has been key <laughs> for the last 10 years or so while running my business. It's hard because as humans, we want to control things and especially with work, we need control and routine. And sometimes those are the two things that we just 
we just can't rely on and we can't have. So we have to get as comfortable as we possibly can with going with the flow. And this, is, this last tip, tip five, is something that I found has really, really helped with feelings of guilt, but also with my daughter as well and her emotions. And that is, as well as planning time during the day for work, it sounds a bit rubbish to say schedule time in for your kids, but I find that in my mind, if I go right at this point in the day, we're gonna do something. Obviously we do more than just that at that time, but putting it in there makes it a priority and it somehow helps me focus on the work and get it done and then put it away. It's like a transition, it helps me put one thing down and pick another thing up rather than my attention being half on one and half on the other at the same time, which just doesn't work. And I do this in the same way that I do with identifying what part of the day that I work the best at. I identify the part of the day that I work the least good at. Words are getting hard again, clearly. The afternoon. The afternoon, I just, I cannot do any work, but it's perfect for sitting down and really giving my daughter some one-on-one -on -one time. Now, again, obviously, she gets me and my attention throughout the day, but this is for her. This is where I prioritize her and push everything else out. Again, that time will have to be, you know, depending on what's going on, we'll have to be flexible with that time, but, but all things going well and as they should. My most productive part of the day is in the morning and that's when I try and get work done. And then my least productive time is about mid-afternoon and that's when we have our one-to-one -one time or we do something. And this is the extra part to this tip is to have um, activities that you don't hate. <laughs> and I cannot stress that enough. But if you do activities that you don't really love doing, you'll resent it. You won't really be there in the moment and your kids will know it. And this is gonna get a little bit heavy, but it's something that I'm having to remind myself of a lot as well. And that is, remember that when your last day on this earth comes, you are not going to remember the mess in your house. You're not gonna remember the washing up piles. You're not gonna remember your to-do lists or the work that you got done or the work you didn't. You're not gonna remember any of that. That's not the stuff that matters. Yes, it's the stuff that pays the bills. But if you have an off day, an off few days or even an off week, it doesn't matter. Long term, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to end it there because I promised my daughter I would play Animal Crossing with her. So I will see you next time. Bye.